Hello, hi, my name is Jess Marie. Welcome to Yesterday's Coffee Grounds. This is gonna be a little bit of a slower tone video. One, because I'm, I'm talking about my addiction with drinking and, and what that does to me and my life and this desire to be sober. Two, we were out late drinking last night, so my voice is a little bit tired and raspy. I smoked a cigarette for the first time since August, August, September, October, November for almost five months and that's how I know like things are bad and I told myself over and over and over if you're struggling ad with addiction you know what this is like especially if you not necessarily that you have a grasp on it but it's not completely blown out of control where I'm sitting there and I'm like I have had a problem with tobacco before smoking cigarettes before and I'm looking at this smoke and I'm like around people who are smoking all night and and I've been around people who are smoking all night and it's fine we went out to uh, an NHL game and we watched hockey and it was great it was awesome and I'm, I'm watching and, and I'm like oh. we're talking about the game afterwards and I was saying Jess you know you don't want that because you have a problem if you start you will not stop don't do it don't do it and I'm verbally telling the boys this as well I have not smoked in this long or this period of time I should not smoke and this is why oh yeah I don't want to be the reason you smoke and blah 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 but hey if you got to smoke you got to smoke and I'm like ah you know what I'm gonna do it I'm gonna test I'm going to test and see where my control is. And as soon as I had, I had a tough time even like inhaling and I was like, does this feel awesome? I'm like, yeah, it feels freaking awesome. I loved it. I did, I, I'm not gonna lie, I loved it. And I ended up having another. And it's like, okay, no, 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 no. Let's, let's call a cab, call a cab and go. I can just pass out in bed and on the way home I was sitting in the car and I was everyone's kind of like half passing out and and I was like Lord I don't know what people's religious beliefs it it, it doesn't matter higher spirit power I sat there and I was creator I I don't want to drink anymore and I, I definitely have a problem with open liquor and I, I need help. I need help. I need control over this because I'm, I'm okay for two days and then I, I drink, I open a bottle, I, I need help. And I don't know what that help looks like yet. I don't know what I have to do, but I do have faith that asking for it, asking for that help is, is the first step and being verbal and vocal about it. And I have been so vocal with my family about it. I've, I've talked to certain members in my family and it's really difficult saying to them, hey, I, I've been drinking a little bit excessively and it's just a, yeah, we know. Yeah, we see. Okay, I need help. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come out and say, I, I don't know what to do it. Oh, well, just stop. Just don't buy any. Okay. We are in such a close range to, it is so easily accessible and so widely acceptable to buy liquor like it, it doesn't just work to say don't don't drink just stop because then what happens is he, the body the soul is now left with all these lingering emotions all these things where it's like oh i i did this i i, I like to do this while i drink so this week for example um i was making fresh fruit mimosas because i was like you know what I am going to decorate the house with pine and cedar, spruce, whatever. 
I'm gonna decorate the house and I'm gonna have some fresh fruit mimosas and it was awesome it was great it was so much fun but then I'm like I just drank a bottle of bubbly to decorate the house and you know what's the worst is I don't get drunk I don't get hung over and that's also a problem like I get minor headaches maybe dehydration but not to the point where it's crippling and it's more of a subtle energy loss where it's like I woke up this morning went back to bed I now woke up at 7 30 and I went back to bed and it is now 8 20 and I'm like girl don't you don't go back to bed don't do it um I've I've asked people I've asked one person specifically in my life if you notice me drinking too much, I need you to say something. I need you to, to recognize that and say something. And a couple months went by and it's like, hey, do you notice, do you think I'm drinking a lot? Yeah, I do. Okay, why didn't you say anything? I'm, I'm, I'm asking for people who I care about and I think that's an okay thing to ask people who I love, people who are family, and people who I assume love me back, to be like, hey, I'm concerned about your drinking habits. And I do feel I'm alone on that. And what's also bad is I, I don't feel like I'm enough of an alcoholic to go to a group or some kind of therapy about it. I don't feel like I drink enough to be a part of that community, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. It sounds so silly, but I could go two, three days without drinking. And then it's like, oh, I'm just gonna have some tequila in, in my coffee and then by chance somebody brings a bottle of something over or last night was unexpected. We went to the hockey game and it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I'm tired because I we already went for a big drive. We went for an hour drive to Costco, did a big Costco shop. I have Levon with me, hour home, get home, barely bring all the groceries in. Two other guys show up to go to the hockey game and it's like, oh, okay, so trying to get all our stuff together, put food away, put $450 worth of groceries away. <laughs> and I'm privileged. I'm very privileged. I don't want to, I, I just want to acknowledge that fact as well of I'm blessed and I'm extremely grateful to now have um, a house filled with food and have all these luxuries around us and be able to provide for our family. I just want to definitely acknowledge that and that we got to go to a hockey game last night and that was an amazing experience and to bring our son and it was great. I just don't know how to convert my life and I don't know how to be sober forever. I can be sober today and I can be sober tomorrow and when I hit one or two or four days even, I feel like I need a drink and that's a problem. That's a problem for me and I do have a lot of access to free liquor and you know what I actually, I have like I, unopened bottles in my house. As long as they're unopened, it's okay. I can be around it and not feel the need to open them. Once they're open though, that's when it's a problem. And I already, I know the types of, it's mostly wine. Wine I cannot be around. Uh, hard liquor is fine. Hard liquor is completely fine. I have open vodka, open tequila is okay. I have tinctures, which are vodka base and they're fine. Like it's, it's okay like that. Wine, I cannot have in the house. I will drink that. Um, yeah, I, I guess I just wanted to talk about, I, I don't know how to be sober and I don't know where 
to go because I I've seen I'm seeing a counselor and she knows a little bit about it um I also just want to state for the record it doesn't ever impair my ability to take care of my son I never get to that point because unfortunately I I drink a bottle of wine and I'm not drunk and that's that's very unfortunate that's it's pretty bad and I also don't really get hungover so and that's because I, I prepare myself all morning my morning self versus my nighttime self is a completely different human in the morning it's like I drink water I eat very well I eat colors with all my meal I eat protein with all my meals um, I do very well in the afternoon I turn into such a different human and I'm like what happened and it's something I need to figure the fuck out because it's it's not sustainable and it's not healthy and it's it's crushing to my soul it is crushing to my soul to and I don't even rely on liquor it's a or alcohol it's a weird relationship where we're good friends we're really good friends and we have a great time together and it knows when when it's open in my house it has control over me so i i'm just gonna end this mm -hmm. video off with a prayer and this was kind of a prayer i was rolling with last night dear creator Thank you for this morning. Thank you for, for allowing me to wake up clear-minded. And I know it was tough for me to wake up, but thank you, Creator, for getting me out of bed, getting me here to this video, to this audience. And for anyone who made it this far, thank you so much. Lord Creator, I need help. I, I need support. I need your strength. I need your pursuit of goodness to to help my addiction to help myself not drink to help myself stay away from alcohol and wine and whatever that may be and i don't know what that looks like creator but you do and if somebody needs to be sent to me i please i ask for that person to come soon i don't want to put a timeline on it or a restriction but I ask for that person to support me in my sobriety to come soon. I, I ask that I have the strength to say no. I ask for that strength to say no. I ask for the support around me to, to recognize what I'm doing and just be able to hold me accountable and to love me. Because every time I try not to drink, I have a really tough time with my emotions and it's easier to drink and mask it and and be a joy in the world when I've had a couple of drinks than it is to siphon all my shit and be a joy and and come to my shit later I need support and sometimes I feel like I'm running out of options and sometimes I feel like I haven't even tapped into my options. But Lord, I trust you and I trust in your timing and your love and your strength. And I ask to to receive some of that. I ask for the people who are, are listening and who are also struggling with sobriety of whatever level that they're going through to find that strength, whether it be the strength to go to a meeting or reach out for help to even open up to somebody about their addiction I ask for I pray I, I pray I pray I pray for them to have that strength to do so and for us to know that it's it's okay it's okay we are loved we are love and we are loved and
what my purpose is, I'm not sure. What my journey looks like, I have no idea. Today I know I have the strength and tomorrow I know I have the strength. But the day after and the day after that, what does it look like? When I am faced with temptation, what does that look like? And I ask for that, that knowledge. Thank you again for, for this morning, this chat, this cup of coffee, for my beautiful son who's gonna wake up any moment, <laughs> being able to hug him and hold him and be grateful. So, with that said, my name is Jess Marie. If you made it this far, thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world.